Hey guys, what's up? Alec back with the daily stock market and look at that. We had a super, super interesting earnings week last week with Coinbase up 18%, DraftKings up 15%, and we even had Redfin up 33%. Shopify was also a star of last week, up 29%. Majority of this video is going to be about the earnings week coming up ahead because it's going to be another action-packed earnings week. So make sure you're staying throughout this entire video and make sure you're subscribed with post notifications on YouTube because we're going to dive into Tesla stock later on this week on our YouTube channel and go over if we think that it's a good buy. How low do we think it can go? Can it go under $150 per share? Remember, in late April, it was $155. So is it up only from here? And Tesla's going back to $195, $200 per share? Or is Tesla going to be falling back down closer to that $125 mark? That's going to be an interesting talking point and a very interesting video. So make sure you're subscribed. And without any further ado, let's jump right into this video. Okay, so let's skip over Monday before the open because that's already going to be released. Let's go to Monday after the close. We have PayPal reporting, which is going to be a very interesting one. If PayPal stock ends up falling, I'm definitely going to be buying some shares for long term. We also have Palantir reporting, which is going to be an interesting one. There's a good chance they could be trading down on that reporting. However, they could be a surprise. We'll dive into it a little bit deeper. Um, after that, we have Lucid Motors reporting. Very, very interesting stock. This is going to be a very sought after earnings and a scrutinized earnings. People are going to be watching and trading a lot of Lucid. We have him and hers um, going over to Tuesday before the open. We have Nicola, EVgo, Under Armour. Tuesday after the close, we have Airbnb, a good travel stock. We have Rivian reporting, and there's a good chance that Rivian's earnings will be a little bit better than Lucid. Okay, I like Rivian overall. If you guys have been following the channel and watching the EV updates, you know Rivian is performing a lot better than Lucid right now. We also have Twilio, Affirm, and Upstart all reporting, which were all winners in the pandemic era stocks. So it'll be interesting to see how they perform on these earnings. We also have Win Hotels reporting. Wednesday before the open, we have Roblox, we have Wendy's, we have Toyota. After the close, we have Walt Disney reporting. So I hope that stock trades down a little bit further because I want to scoop up some more Walt Disney for long term. We have the Trade Desk, we have Unity, we have Beyond Meat, and Robinhood all reporting in the first three days of this week. So you can see that, needless to say, that this week is going to be very hectic and very crazy, and a lot of stocks are going to be very volatile this week as well. Thursday, we have JD.com, Fiber, um, Krispy Kreme, Yeti, Tapestry, which is an interesting stock to look at if you don't know much about Tapestry. They own a lot of luxury brands. Thursday, after the close, we have not much going on. And Friday, we have not much going on as well. So the first three days of this week are going to be the most hectic. But let's dive into some individual stock and go over some predictions. So first up, let's talk about PayPal at $75 per share. Okay, here we can see that they are not doing much in the last three months. They've been a very volatile stock going up and down. So they've been pretty easy to trade um, within a 5% range. Really, they've only been moving in the last three months or so. Um, before that, they've had huge moves. Um, you know, in a, just a few months span of time, they were up around 40%. And then around six months time, they fell 30% and then went on to rise 20%. And fall another 15 or so percent. And then they've been consolidating very recently. So it'll be exciting to get a big move on PayPal below $75 per share for long term buyers. We can see that they are at a five year low. And it's interesting because I was looking at a bunch of different growth stocks, like PayPal, for example, that are at five years, five year lows. And going into their fundamentals and everything, and PayPal is an interesting one. We'll dive into it a little bit more in this video, go over the financials. Um, but here you can see it was up at $300 per share, and now it's at a five-year low. So is it a good price at $75 per share? We can see that they are still trading at a premium at 35 PE ratio, but they've always been trading at a premium. So this is the lowest their PE ratio has been, historically speaking, for the last five years or so. 
Um, market cap is 84 billion. So there's a huge ceiling of growth for PayPal as well. So diving into their income statement, they had a huge growth story from 2016 to 2020, 2021. But recently they have taken a dive on their net income, which is the most important thing that the stock market cares about at this moment in time. We haven't seen any real growth since 2018 to present day, which is the last five years. But in 2020, we saw a huge spike on their net income to 4.2 billion. If we go over to total revenue, here's where things get interesting because they have been growing uh, double digits every single year consistently as far back as you can really grow go. So a growth stock, yes, PayPal is that. If we look at quarter over quarter, we can see that it's been pretty consistent with their revenue as well. They've just been slacking a little bit on their income statement and have reported most uh, their only really negative quarter, which was Q2 2022. As we scroll down, their balance sheet isn't the most attractive thing in the world. And if we look at their annual history, um, it really hasn't always been that good either. In 2018, it was 64% um, debt to assets, and now it's 74%. So we really don't want to see that creeping above 80%, 85%, 90%. That's going to be a huge red flag for PayPal. Now, here is an interesting article I briefly want to go over because it goes over two stocks I want to talk about in this video, which is Disney and PayPal. So here's the title. Big Tech has made earnings look better. But here come Disney and PayPal because we saw every big stack stock report positive, awesome earnings like Amazon, Meta, Apple, all those reported great earnings, Microsoft. So can the same thing happen for Disney and PayPal? Let's dive into it a little bit more. Earning Watch, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft have helped the S&P 500 earnings surpass expectations. Disney, video game companies, and PayPal are arriving in the days ahead. This week for earnings, for the week ahead, 32 of the S&P 500 companies will report quarterly results this week, including from the Dow Jones Industrial Walt Disney, which is gonna be a very interesting one. Video game companies are some of the most prominent this week with developers like EA following up layoffs and disappointing earnings last quarter while executives decide whether to delay or pull the plug on some popular game releases. So what are the numbers to watch on PayPal? Here we see PayPal and consumer spending. PayPal platform reports quarterly results on Monday after the close ahead of leadership changes at the top and in limbo online spending. The results will be a proxy for customer spending overall after e-commerce demand surged and then faded through the pandemic. However, remember, we saw Shopify stock absolutely skyrocket. So that could be a good thing in the whole e-commerce space for PayPal earnings coming up next. So can PayPal surge like Shopify did next? PayPal could also face more questions about its future during its earnings call after its chief executive, Dan Shulman, in February said he's planning to retire from the company at the end of the year. Bank of America analysts in a research note last month said further details on Schlomer's successor in the months ahead will, will be key focal point after the stock, a steady gainer for years, shed a good chunk or almost all of its increases in 2021. It's basically at a five-year low right now like we talked about. The analysts added that we continue to believe that tech product development, deployment, needs to be a core skill set of the new leader. So overall, PayPal steadily beats on its earnings last three quarters in a row. It doesn't have high expectations this time, so there's a good chance for an earnings beat on PayPal. Also, we saw Shopify surge with e-commerce demand, so PayPal could be the next one to surge. So mark your calendars. If you want to see exactly what stocks are options I'm taking out and if I'm going to be buying call options on PayPal, what strike prices and expiration dates, or if I'm buying puts, make sure you message me on Instagram. Join the close friends list. That's where I post all my trades. Now over 2,000 total students on the close friends list and over 800 positive testimonials now on the highlight section of my Instagram. 
Okay, the next stock we have to talk about is Disney stock at $100 per share, up 3% on Friday. And overall, in the past month, it's been doing some wacky movements, up 5% or so, but it hasn't moved much. In the last three months, the same could be said. However, it did make a 17% downward movement around February, March. And in the last year, it's been very volatile as well, going as high as $125 and as low as $85 per share. If you've been a subscriber of the channel for a while now, you know I like to swing trade Disney and set price alerts on Disney under $90 per share, closer to $85 per share, and trading or selling above $120 to $125 per share, closer to that $120 mark. Okay, that yields us about a 20 to 30% swing trade pretty consistently. And here we can see Disney peaked at $191 per share. So if it did get to new all-time highs again, that could be around a 90% gain on Disney's share price from where it's at now. So it could be a buy now situation. Here you can see I own a very small amount. Um, I This is my account that I don't buy long-term, so kind of just disregard that. Um, as we scroll down, we can see that the market cap is $183 billion, so it does have a big ceiling ahead of it. We've seen Disney closer at a $300 billion market cap in the past, so it does have some room to grow. Uh, the P.E. ratio, 55. Now, we won't dive too far into Disney because I still want to go over another stock after Disney but let's get a summary going for Disney. The management team at Walt Disney Company is expected to announce financial results on the coming days. The general consensus is the firm will perform better than it did last year, but investors should pay attention to key development. Cost cuts continuing recovering from the pandemic when the parks were shut down, strickening parts of the business, streaming, and other factors will likely be the primary emphasis after the market closed on May 10th. The Walt Disney Company is expected to announce financial results. Okay, if we scroll down a little bit more, a quick look at the headline results as in the case with any company out there. The first thing that would be on Disney, Disney investors' minds will be the headline news. At the very top, we have revenue. According to analysts, sales for the company should come in around $21.8 billion. If this does come to fruition, it would represent an increase of 13.3% over the $19.25 billion the company generated just one year earlier, which will be a very bullish thing, and that's what analysts are projecting right now. I will get into some specific growth areas of the company shortly, but more likely than not, any sort of upside like this will come from the streaming operations of the business firms, which is a very interesting thing and a bullish thing. You could also look into Netflix to see how their streaming came in, all right? But if Disney is growing their streaming and growing their subscribers and passing Netflix, that's going to be a very bullish thing for the stock especially with this earnings report, as well as other parts of the business that are still recovering from the pandemic. On the bottom line or the EPS, analysts think the business could generate earnings per share of 71 cents. This would rep represent a significant improvement over the 26 cents per share that the business reported during the second quarter of the 2022 fiscal year. In dollar terms, this would translate to a profit, a net profit around $1.3 billion. That would be significantly higher than the profit of $470 million in net income the company reported in the second quarter of last year. And remember, the, the stock market really cares about net income right now. So for Disney to be growing in one year, their net income from $470 million to $1.3 billion, that's almost three times the net income growth. So they're generating a significant bottom line, which is very important and very, very bullish for Disney stock going into earnings. And let's talk briefly about Roblox stock reporting this week. Also, they're down 22% in the last month, by the way. So this could be a buy the dip opportunity. Remember, in the last year, they're still up 13%. So it's not like they're trading at the very bottom. However, they are trading well below their IPO price of $64 per share. 
I want to see them closer to $26 per share or at new all-time lows if I'm going to be buying them for long-term, which could be possibly around the corner, okay? Because their earnings are coming up and they're known to move big on earnings. So if they fall big on earnings, I will be buying some for long-term. We can see a negative P ratio implying that they don't have any bottom line at all. They have a negative bottom line. The market cap is 21 billion. So they have a huge way to go on their market cap. They could easily, you know, two to three X over the next five years or so if they play their cards right. Roblox stock plunges on key March met metrics. Is Roblox stock a buy right now? So here we can see that their stock you know, dropped on some key metrics. This was just reported on April 17th, by the way. Roblox plunged 12% after the company disclosed some key metrics for March that showed a potential drop in average bookings per daily active user. Roblox said its average booking, bookings per daily active users were between $3.73 and $3.85 in March, which was down 2 to 1% from last year, primarily due to foreign currency fluctuations, which is an interesting thing to note there. Meanwhile, the company said its March revenue was estimated between 212 million and 223 million, which was up 15 to 21% from a year ago period. So when we get information like this and they disclose information right before earnings, that could be a good thing because it could give us a little bit more insight into earnings on which way we want to play it. But it could also be a bad thing because a lot of the earnings is already priced in like that 12% downward movement on April 17th that it had could already be priced in. So overall, I think that can be a, a bearish thing for Roblox earnings. However, it already did make a downward movement of 22% over the past month. And Roblox stock did move down 22% from the news of its earnings. It basically released its earnings a little bit early just for one month. So maybe they did that strategically. So the stock moves down and then they say, oh yeah, March was low. But, you know, January and February numbers were really, really good. And then the stock shoots up. So overall, the easy thing to do is take a put out on Roblox. But just be very, very careful because sometimes the easy thing to do isn't the correct thing or the right thing to do. So if you want to see exactly what I'm doing, the day the earnings come out, which is May 10th, by the way, make sure you message me at the Daily Stock Market on Instagram. I have some spots available for my close friends list right now. Um, if you want to click on success number eight, the highlight section of my Instagram, you can see some positive testimonials. Lots of students are making thousands of dollars with this program. Here we see someone up 600%, another one up $1,900. Another student up $490, over 544%. And the list goes on and on and on. So if you want to read some of these positive testimonials for yourself, click on the highlight section of my Instagram, success number eight, success number seven. DM me to become a part of it. Now over 2,000 students, so you'll be joining a bunch of other students just like you that can help you learn as well. Thank you guys for all the love and support. Let's have a huge earnings week coming up this week. Let's do it together. All right, share this video with a friend if you think that they will find it helpful. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Remember, don't time the market, buy the market. Peace.